common behavior, let's put it that way, with human for beings. God works all things for the good of them that love him. For the good of them who are called according Even to his animals, they do have fear by their response. So, fear is common to every living thing which has blood running through his veins. So, we can say that fear is common to all. And that's why we have I've been talking about fear in the sense that it affects other area of life. It affects what we do. It hinders our faith. It hinders our obedience to Christ or to the word of God. So when we talk about fear, uh, it's such a character, a state of psychology, adaptive, anticipation of what is about to happen even though it has not happened. That's what fear is. And so we have looked at various impact of fear on our lives. The last one being the impact of, of fear on our investment decisions. You know, we want to make investment. We are afraid of losing money. It's sometimes due to fear in planning in what involves risk. So fear is such a condition that it's an anticipation of what we perceived to be a danger or what we perceive to be a pain. And then for every human being, the stimulus of pain is always what human being or any living being resists. So we resist pain. We resist whatever that is inconvenience for us. And that, you know, affects our relationship with God. And so we, we are dealing with this fear so that we are not ruled by the spirit of fear. So that when we want to connect with God with our faith, you know, we connect fully and we reap the benefit of faith. So this morning, as I would complete the series on conquering faith, and I want to say this morning, you can overcome faith with courage in Christ Jesus. You can overcome fear with courage in Christ Jesus. You know, you take courage in Christ Jesus. Concerning all things, all aspects of things, what may be going on in your life, what you may have left undone this morning, what you are aware is going on in your life, your concerns, your worries, the challenges that is taking long to be settled or those troubles or the battles. So we, we need to take courage in Christ Jesus. And that's why we're talking, talking about prayer this morning. That prayer is to entrench our courage in the Lord. And so it's what we're going to deal with this morning. I'm going to preach around that and the Lord Help me us to bring this series to a close. Let us pray. Our Lord, we, we thank you this morning. I bless your name and I give you all the honor and glory for the message concerning overcoming fear. And we thank you, Lord God, for the understanding by the revelation of your word, who you are in our life, and the faith that has been bequeathed to us in Christ Jesus. John says that he baptized us with with the Holy Ghost and fire, the power to overcome all things. And Second Timothy also says to us that we, we were not given the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and, and, and a sound mind. 
And so, Lord, this morning I pray that, Lord, this message will give us a sound mind. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Overcome fear with courage in Christ Jesus. Now, look at John chapter 16. Look at John chapter 16, the very last verse, 33. And he says, I have told you, in verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. In this world you will have concern. You will get worried. That's my words. But take heart. I have overcome the world. This is the assurance from the Lord. That he has overcome for us so that we may live with triumph. Or live a triumphant life. And so we need to understand that you know, many things will bring fear to our life. Situations that we hear about, information, the reports about our health will bring fear upon you. The threat of the economy will bring fear on you. But he says that he has already overcome over 2,000 years ago so that we may have rest. We may have confidence. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is where we take courage in a time of challenge. You need courage. Also in 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. He said, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Even our faith. Verse 5 says, Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So I want to tell you this morning, no matter what it is that may be going on in your life, you need to take courage in Christ Jesus for the victory he has accomplished for us. And by his word of courage, the word of assurance, is where you build up courage in the face of challenges. So I'm saying this morning, you can overcome your fear with courage in Christ. Now, fear is a behavioral pattern of every living being. Human beings and animals, they do demonstrate fear. They do demonstrate fear. Even the wildest animal, when he sees what is more than him, it runs. It runs back. It turns away. We have identified fear as emotion experienced in anticipation of some specific pain or danger. That's what it is. It's an emotion that we experience where we think that something is coming against us, where we think that this report we have received is going to end our life, is going to end our job. We begin to exercise that fear in our minds. And when this anticipation of some specific pain or danger, usually it is accompanied with a desire to flee or to fight. So, 
it's accompanied with a reaction. Last week I submitted that fear affects our belief. Fear affects our faith in the word of God. Particularly when it demands on us to do certain things. But in the word of God is where the power is. You cannot allow either way you are planning to be where you want to go to be a fear to you or the report that you have received be a fear to hinder the operation of your faith or to erase your belief. In Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, let's look at the word of Joshua. We know the story and who Joshua was. You take it from verse 7. Joshua was the one who took over the leadership of the children of God from Moses. He had no revelation of where they were going. But he had been under the mentorship of Moses. And then he took over from Moses. He took over the challenge. He took over the people. And the Lord coming to him could only say a word to him in verse 7, Joshua chapter 1. And he said, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. To reference what he's been told. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. He said, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That was the word given to him. The word of courage. Referring him to the law of God where he takes his courage from. So when you have a contrary report or a contrary message or something that is not in line with your faith, you need to refer to the word of God where you get this courage to move on with your life. And I'm saying that Christ, who has accomplished all things for us, is the one that we rest on. Is the one that we rest on. Is the one that we go to. When something is contrary, we go to him. He is the high priest. He is the healer. He is the Lord of harvests. So I'm saying this morning, let us take courage. Let's overcome fear with courage in, in Christ Jesus. And as I mentioned last week, that fear is an anticipation of, of some pain, danger, anticipation of some price to pay or sacrifice that is demanded of us. It can be what worries us. Because when we keep the sight of fear, the sight of pain, the sight of of the inconvenience of what is demanded, it robs us of our faith. It robs us of our faith. I mentioned last week about the fear of lack and poverty, the fear of not having enough, the thought of not having enough hinders you from the experience of wonders of God and divine provisions. And we, we look at um, examples Whereby you are always saying that it's not enough. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. 
It's, it's the sight of what you have and that's what is causing you fear of touching what you have left. You cannot operate in faith when you start looking at what is left, what is not enough. But if you have conquered the fear of not having enough, you will always trust God with what you have when the season demands on you. When the situation demands on you, you will always trust God with what you have. You will always trust God with what you have. Maybe, for example, when you are to sow seed or when you are to give out, you will always trust God with what you have, irrespective of the circumstances or the situation, the atmosphere, the environment, the season. Jeremiah always said to us, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7, Jeremiah 17, verse 7 and 8. I don't want to miss that. And he made two comparisons on those who trust in their flesh of man and those who trust in the Lord. And verse 7 said, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Whose confidence is in him. Whose courage is in him. He said, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Verse 8 says, they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the streams and it does not fear when heat comes. It does not fear when heat comes. It, its leaves are always green. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought. It has no worries. Because we're talking about the blessed one who trusts in the Lord. And never fails to bear fruit. Never fails to bear fruit. Even with the little that is available, the little doesn't run dry. Because they trust God. So blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him, not in what he has. As I was writing, I realized that when man trusts or relies on what they possess or material that they possess, the moment that material is under threat, it's a fear in their life. So we're talking about fear of different dimensions that may come upon us or that may be ahead of us. We need to take courage in the works of Jesus Christ. If you trust God, you will not fear the prevailing economic condition. You will faithfully obey his word and serve him. And serve him. This is applicable to all things, all forms of fear. Where you reference God, when you reference the word of God, when fear comes upon you, when worries, when you are concerned about certain things, you reference him. If there is what they call adaptive fear in the ordinary course of event, fear can affect our faith in God. Fear can affect our trust in God. To respond in the time of trials and tribulations of economic challenges. It, it becomes what is adaptive. It's be, it becomes what you take upon yourself by the reports that you see and that you hear. And so we have to conquer this. And we can see those who had nothing in the whole testament, we saw the role of Christ in their situation because they took courage. And I want to say to you in First Kings chapter 17, verse 12, what the woman said to Elijah, he, she took courage in the word of Elijah. 
1 Kings chapter 17, we know about the widow of Seraphat. The man of God demanded of her what is left in a difficult time. And she said in verse 12, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house and I have, I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal and then my son and I would die. That was a situation. She was left with more or less nothing. Look at the way the NIV, I believe, described this. He said, a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jar. In other words, it has really run out. It's just at the base level. That was a severe lack. Or perhaps a poverty. But a man of God spoke to her. This woman went and prepared the meal and gave first to the man of God and then to her household. This woman, she took the courage. She took the courage by the word of Elijah in the time of famine to give a last provision. So tell me, this woman overcame the fear. She took courage in the word that she received. She took courage in the word that she received. The Bible said in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. That word went for that woman. She took courage in it. So this woman overcame fear and stepped into faith. Stepped into faith in a very difficult situation. If the word of God does not move you 90% of your Christian life, you have to check your spirit. If the word, if the word of faith does not move you, 90% of your Christian life, you need to check the kind of spirit that is in you. And I use 90%, we give 10% as a discount. Because we are human. We need to understand what the word of God is. So if you are not moved by the word of faith, at least 90% in your Christian life, you are still struggling with some spirit, which is not right. And its likelihood is the spirit of fear, the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of unbelief. That's what you are struggling with. The Bible says, for God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. That's the spirit we have been given. But when we have difficulty to respond to the word of faith, which produces faith in us, there is a wrong spirit that is ruling us. And among those spirits is the spirit of fear. The spirit of unnecessary concern. Unnecessary concern. Worries. Fear. So we have to understand the spirit that we have. The spirit of God has prepared us for every moment in life. The spirit of God. And I'm saying today that we can overcome this fear with courage in the word of Christ. We can overcome it. You become courageous having gone through a panic situation, a dangerous situation that you may have anticipated. What you think is not possible in your life anymore becomes a source of fear. But when you apply faith and when you take courage in the finished work of Jesus, what you have thought is not possible becomes possible in your life. 
Because this courage I'm talking about is a span of relationship with Christ. To conquer your fear, find courage in Christ. Courage is bravery. Courage is bravery. To be brave in the face of fear and loss of hope. That's what courage is. Either you are in a kind of a storm or you are in a kind of a battle that is ongoing. The only harmonition that you will have is the word of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. You need to find courage in Christ Jesus. In the story of the Lazarus family, in John chapter, Gospel of John chapter 11, we knew what happened there. They sent a message to him that the one that you love is dead. Or perhaps sick. And it took three or four days for the Lord to go there. And after that, the Lord spoke to his disciples. He spoke to his disciples, he said, our friend Lazarus, he said, our, Lazar, our friend Lazarus, he's sick. But he said, this sickness will not end in death. They let, let us go back to Judea. And then one of them said to him, Let us go, which was Thomas. Say, Let us go that we may die with him. It tells you the relationship. But this was a time that these people, they needed the courage most. They sent a message to him. And then we found out that it took four days. And by the time he got there, the man had already died. Buried. The hope was lost. But now, let's look at the encounter as, the, as Jesus arrived in that place. In John chapter 11 from verse 17, he said on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. And what did Martha say? Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. The hope was lost. But what Martha needs at that moment was the word of courage. What she needed at that time was courage. Verse 22 says, but now, but, but I know, she said, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. He said, God will give him whatever he asks. She's already taking her courage in the presence of Christ. In when the hope is lost, but she believed that whatever Christ asks of the Father, the Father will grant it. Are you able to believe that whatever you are going through, that true Christ is able to be solved. You are able to break the barriers. You are able to get healed. So we saw here, he said, but I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her in verse 23, your brother will rise again. So your brother will rise again. Hallelujah. It takes the vibration of your faith for you to see the benefit of faith. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we have seen how 
she took courage in the moment of, 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 of a dilemma that their hope was lost. And Jesus said, no, your brother will rise again. God may be saying to someone, your life will rise again. Your business will rise again in the name of Jesus. So maybe you are questioning God on certain matters in your life. You're just questioning God about matters in your marriage, about matters in, in, in your family. What may have gone wrong? And you stand and say, God, why now? But I want you to know that you can find courage in Christ Jesus to gain restoration, to build up again. I said to build up again. You need courage in Christ Jesus. And the fear will be over. And when you take courage in Christ, it simply say that you are not alone in the battle. That's what he said. You are not alone in the battle. You are not alone in that condition that you find yourself. You are not alone. That's why you need to take courage in Christ Jesus. When things are falling apart, when you find yourself in financial mess, debt all over, or you are unemployed, you cannot meet certain things in the family, you must take courage. Or your life has no meaning, you must find courage in Christ Jesus. And you will eliminate the fear of the future. Praise the name of the Lord. I said you will eliminate that fear concerning the future. About tomorrow, you will eliminate that fear. No wonder Job said in Job chapter 3 verse 25. He said, what I always feared has happened to me. What I dreaded has come to me. That was the word of Job. He said, what I feared has happened to me. And I've said to you that fear is a psychological intimidation by what we adapt to our mind. That's what fear is. In my own terms, it can be a psychological intimidation by what you adapt to your mind. But if we commit all things into the hand of God, into the able hand of God, we shall find courage in challenging times to reach our goals, to achieve our dreams, to achieve our vision in these challenging times. Hallelujah. So why did Job say that? That what I always feared has happened to me. And what he dread has come true. That was what he built up in his mind. That was what he built up in his mind. That all these things that I have today, that they may disappear tomorrow. That's what he built in his mind. So that's why I said earlier, if you rely on material possession or you rely on your job, the thought of losing them will be your biggest fear. Will be your biggest fear. But I'm saying today you can overcome the fear with courage in Christ Jesus. Let him be your strength. Let him be your inspiration. And just hold on. Just hold on to him and the situation will be resolved in the name of Jesus. Those matters will be settled in the name of Jesus. He says in that same John 16 that we read, he said, take courage, I have overcome the world. Take courage, for I have overcome the world. I have overcome what you will see in this world. I have overcome what you will experience in this world. He said, take courage. Take courage. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a clap of free. Amen.
Lighten up your heart this morning. If you are watching, lighten up yourself and acknowledge the word of God. You can type on the line in affirmation. Let's look at another matter where there was a big situation when a life-threatening situation Look at the situation of Jairus, a synagogue official. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 22. Mark chapter 5, from verse 22. We saw this man, an official in the synagogue, had a young daughter. And... Um, this child of his fell sick. And he could go to no one but to go to Christ. From verse 21, when Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders or officials named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus he fell at his feet he pleaded honestly with him my little daughter is dying please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and leave the Bible says so Jesus went with him and that was a day that the Lord was busy. They said there was so much crowd. But he went with him. In the, that was a pathetic situation. But we saw here that this man took courage in Christ while his daughter dies at home. He continued the journey with Jesus patiently. He continued with Jesus patiently. When you read that account, other breakthroughs were happening, other healing was happening. You remember the woman with the, with the issue of blood also came in the picture, yet Jairus stood, stood by Jesus. His fear has been cast upon the feet of Christ. He's in the middle of courage, not in the middle of fear. Hallelujah. Now, many believers have become impatient with the journey of salvation. Many believers, they are impatient with the ways of God. God, to some believers, God is just too slow. The word of faith is just too, too slow for some believers. Some want prophecy. Some want an instant miracle. Some want instant healings. That's what we see. Because this fear is what takes people to every place. Takes believers to seek help in different places, at different mountains, both high and super high mountains, super high places. It's this fear of the report of what they have been told that is going to happen, which has not happened anyway. Hallelujah. Jairus came to Jesus and said, my child is dying. He came to him and Jesus followed him. And I want to tell you that the spirit of Christ is in our midst. The spirit of Christ is upon you. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't let this fear take you to wrong places. Don't let fear take you to wrong places. You need to be patient. There is a time of the Lord. There's a time of the Lord. Whatever you have gone through in 10 years can be like one day before him. Can be like one day before him. 
Today, God can make a change where you have never seen a change. God can bring that healing through where you have not seen healing. And I want to tell you, no matter what it is, the fear is, you can go to any high mountain. You can go to the super high mountain or places. Those places doesn't move God. What moves God is your faith. What moves God is your faith. No matter what your fear is, you need to take courage in Christ. You need to take courage in Christ. So Jairus found courage in Christ Jesus, patiently waiting on him and believing he will do it. He will do it. They did all the work together. He was there when some miracles were happening. He took courage in whom he is with. Praise the name of the Lord. He took courage. No matter what is going in your life, if you are in Christ Jesus, you need to take courage in him. You need to seek your peace in him. You need to seek your peace in him. No matter what the doctor says, Whose report shall we believe? The report of our Lord. You need to seek courage. So this man, again, when you read further in verse 35 of that account, Mark chapter 5, verse 35, the people from his house, family, they came to him. They said, why do you bother the master? The child has died. The child has died. They brought the news to him. They brought the news to him right there. But when you have found courage, it's not over. Or said God says it's over. So they came to him and the Lord overheard them. Jesus said to Jairus, do not be afraid any longer. Only believe. Only believe. Do not be afraid. And I'm saying to someone watching, do not be afraid. Only believe. Tell your neighbor, only believe. Hallelujah. Whatever is your issue, sickness and disease, lack of job, financial difficulties, broken marriage, God can fix anything. You need to take courage. You need to take courage. What you need is the word of courage to receive that healing ultimately. You only have to believe. You need the word of courage. Jesus said to him, do not be afraid any longer. Only believe. That's the word that some of you need. You only have to believe that you will be healed. Not that, um, uh, let us pray, if it's the will, if it's the will of God, you will be healed. No, that's not what you need right now. The point is that he says you were we healed over 2,000 years ago. For by his stripes you are healed. That's the word you need. That's the word of courage that will take you to your final wholeness. Healing. That's what you need. And we saw Jesus did the same. He said do not be afraid any longer. Only believe. Only believe. The will of God has been established. You need to believe it. And be courageous. And be courageous. God could not refer Joshua to any other thing than what Moses has told him and what the law, the book of the law said. And I'm challenging someone, where are you going because of the concern you have for your marriage? Because of the concern you have for your business or for your children? Where are you going to? Which places are you going to? It's a question for you today. It's a question for you today. The fear, the fear of what is going to happen that has not happened. Where are you going? You need to take courage in this very moment because you are closer to your breakthrough than you think. As you are closer to your breakthrough than you think before you enter a wrong place and they lay a wrong hands on you. They give you a wrong prophecy. They lay a wrong hands on you. Even take the one that you have. Praise the name of the Lord. 
This is a word for us in this season. Many things are happening. Many things are happening. Understand what courage is in simple terms. The dictionary even described courage. Courage as a quality of spirit. As a quality of, sp of a spirit or of spirit that enables you to face danger or pain without showing fear. Yeah, that's what courage really is. It's a quality of spirit that enables you to face danger or pain. To get the news, to receive the news without showing fear. Because you know what is written about you. You know what the will of God is for your life. To receive the news, either they are promoting you or you are not getting the promotion. Either you are getting the business approved or you are getting the contract or the tender approved or you are not getting it approved. You can't live in fear of that. You know what the Lord has said concerning you. It may be your personal life which are taken in turn negatively. You must know what is written of you. You need to take courage in what has been written of you. Praise the name of the Lord. You need to take courage. You need to take courage. I know financial issues is always an issue. That you barely make it at the end of the month. These are your concerns which causes you to fear. You need to believe in Christ Jesus. You need to believe in Christ. The Lord of harvest. You need to believe in him. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is a source of courage if you believe. If you believe. Either you are facing a kind of foreclosure or you are facing a judgment of repossessing your vehicle or your homes. You need to believe God because you, you need to take courage that there can be a turnaround of issues, a turnaround of events. A favor can come upon you which will rewrite your story. That's how favor works. So it's not over. You need a source of courage right now. That's what you need. That's what you need. And that's what you may need. Because now the economy is showing us something. That we are now in the threshold of a declining economic fundamentals. You saw the interest rate went up last week. is 11.5. And I can show you before the year runs out, it may be 13.5. We are now facing a period that we need to take courage in the word of God and be obedient. He said to them in Job 36, 11, he said, if they hear and obey, he said, they shall live their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. No matter what the economic report is saying, you will live your life in pleasure. Your days shall be prosperous. Your business shall be prosperous. That is the word of courage that I'm giving you this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. You do not need to panic at the thoughts of all these negative things and uh, this news. God will make a way. Hallelujah. God will make a way. Hallelujah. For he works all things for the good of them that love him. And to them who are called according to his purpose. Walk in the purpose of God. Walk in the purpose of God. You will not be forsaken. No matter what the economy is saying, you will not be forsaken. No matter what it is, it will come to your head. Provisions will come. Divine favor will come upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Take courage in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give Jesus a clap of free. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you been blessed today? I believe that this word is meant for you. It's meant for you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you have experienced in the last few years. But I'm saying today, you have tried everything. You have tried everything. Now, seek courage in Christ Jesus. And those matters will be settled. In the name of Jesus. Let's rise up to pray again. Hallelujah. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning. We give you all the glory and honor. Jairus found courage in Christ, and Jesus went with him to that house. He went with him to that house. As they went, he put all people behind. He locked them out. Those who are making noise, those who are gossiping, those who are crying and wailing, he locked all of them out. And he said to them, the child is not dead but sleeping. The child is not dead but sleeping. Those, the circumstances that you are facing is just for a time. It's just for a moment. I want you to believe that. The sickness or disease that you are experiencing right now is just for a moment. That shall be visitation. That shall be divine touch upon your body in the name of Jesus. Take courage in Christ. He has accomplished it over 2,000 years ago in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the Lord went to the house of Jairus in Mark chapter 5 verse 41. The Bible says that he took the child, the daughter, by the hand and said to her, Talita kum, which means little girl, I said to you, get up. Get up. That was the consolidation of the courage of Jairus. What people thought was end or has died came back to life in the name of Jesus. Whatever that may look as if it's dead in your life, what benefits you, what glorifies God in your life that looks as if it's dead, today shall come alive in the name of Jesus. Your glorious life shall come alive in the name of Jesus. Your glorious marriage shall come alive in the name of Jesus. Your glorious ministry shall come alive in the name of Jesus. Talita kum, it shall come alive. It shall come alive in the name of Jesus. Where you think that your chances in life has come to an end, I want to tell you, take courage. Don't fear the future. Fear God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. In the name of Jesus. Don't begin to pray right now. Say, Lord, I release all before you. I release all before you. I bring every issue to your feet this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we are saying, oh Lord God, take over every of our challenge this morning. We bring it to your feet this morning. Every challenge of sickness and every challenge that we may be seeing in our business, we bring it to your feet this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, Jesus, you are the Lord of harvest. You are the Lord of harvest. Whatever that looks like a drought, like a famine in our family finances. Father, we pray this morning, let there be abundance. Let there be abundance. Let there be abundance. In the name of Jesus, where we are lacking help, Father, let help come from the north and the south and the west and the east. In the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we pray tonight, this morning, the Lord will cast all into your mighty hand. For you are able. God said to Abraham, is anything too difficult for me? Lord, we pray, Jehovah, this morning, we believe that nothing is difficult with God. And so, Lord, we take courage. We take courage. We take courage in Christ, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jehovah Nisi. Each end of days, we give you praise. We give you all the honor. We shall be released from every form of struggle. We shall be released. We shall be released. We know, we know. We take courage in Christ Jesus. Just as Jairus took courage and the child which was said to have died came back to life in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those careers. We pray for those potential that are in our means, that are watching. Let their potential come alive. Let their potential come alive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We talk, we referenced how the family of Lazarus received their hope back. Received their hope back. After four days, after being perceived 
to be exchanged. The circumstances and challenges of life. Sometimes we have given up on certain things and said, no, God cannot do anything about this anymore. We've given up over people and said, no, God cannot help this man anymore. It's like there's nothing. I want you to believe something, that you need courage to see that person break through in life. You need courage. You need courage to see that person change his behavior. You need courage. Sometimes faith needs courage. Faith needs courage. And Jairus had faith. Martha, Mary, the family of Lazarus, they, they had faith. But they were challenged. And they sourced courage. And that's where we need to go to the feet of Christ. And so this morning, I'm glad to tell you that you need to take courage. And you see matters being settled. You will see what was broken being built back. You will see what you have missed being returned to you. The blessing being returned to you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will quicken the one holding your blessing to release it. In the name of Jesus, take courage. I say take courage. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give Jesus a clap of free. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe there is an offering, a mission offering. Hallelujah. Pastor uh, Clovis, you can come and take it. Give Jesus a clap of free. Thank you for watching. For those who have watched the service, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give uh, a mission offering. Amen. Just rise on your feet and just bring your mission offering. Hallelujah. The Lord to bless you. Amen. Amen. Did anyone bring their blankets today? <laughs> I hope you forgot. Hallelujah. Amen. So we said today we were to get all the blankets and then we'll distribute. So if you've forgotten yours, maybe you bring it next week Sunday. Amen. Let's rise on our feet. He has died for you to remove condemnation from your life.